coach is like, oh, let me get someone to uh, help to just show us what we did yesterday. <laughs> and you're like, oh, f- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof at BJJ podcast. We love you guys. And we love that you tune in every week and listen to us talk factually sometimes on certain topics. And we generally like to keep you entertained. That we feel is part of our job. But what would help us dramatically is if you subscribe. You hit the subscribe button, whether you're just listening to this on audio or you're watching it on YouTube, and also give us a five-star rating. Why? Because that helps us keep giving you guys the love. It helps other people find out about what we're doing. And then also it means as the audience grows, we can do more cool stuff to help you out. So we would appreciate the love. My friends, do you suffer from jujitsu amnesia? You went to class, you were there, you did the stuff, you rolled, you leave the class, you're like, what the, what just happened? I can't even remember the technique. Like you would go to class the next day and coach would be like, so yesterday we did the whatever technique and you're like, I don't remember that at all. Have you ever experienced this, Joe? Oh, uh, yeah, and then when you see the coach is like, oh, let me get someone to uh, help to just show us what we did yesterday. <laughs> and you're like, oh, f- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh, not me. <laughs> yeah, bro, happens to me all the time. Yeah. Less so these days. Um, but many it, times. Yeah, it's, it's, it's happened to us all, definitely. It doesn't matter who you are. You've definitely had the experience of, si- similar to you had mentioned um, before about the driving thing. You're driving somewhere and then you arrive and you're like, how did I get here? Yeah. <laughs> you just, you, you're kind of on auto mode because you're there. And p- partly this is paying attention, but partly this is, we don't necessarily have a good system for retaining the info. We, we, we're in the habit of going to jujitsu. Awesome. That's great. But we need to have, a, we need to cultivate a system of retaining this information. Now we have touched on this before, but I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to dig in a, a little piece. I, I thought it was funny. And I think that, some of us are guilty of this. Uh, it was somebody calling out someone else. Someone had said at a party, this is, this is some business people. Someone said, well, you know, you win or you learn. And, and the guy said, oh, oh, really? Okay, what did you learn? And the guy was like, oh, uh, well, you know, like uh, we learned not to do that again. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? Okay, so name the things you learned. And the guy couldn't do it. And he was just calling bullshit on this idea that, yeah, okay, sometimes you're successful in what you're trying to do, but when you're not successful, you definitely learn a lesson. And actually, I don't think that's necessarily true. One of the biggest mistakes in jiu-jitsu is just repeating mistakes. Making mistakes is not a problem, but repeating the same mistake over and over. So uh, I'll give you an example. You have Um, the opportunity to learn. Yes. (laughs) But a decision needs to be made whether you take that opportunity up or not. Yeah, and sometimes you don't realise that you need to change your action to get the different result. You're like, surely if I just keep showing up, it'll be fine. So a good student of mine, uh, won't be named, but had come to me and said, oh, I need to work on my armbar defence. And I was like, okay, fair. But I was like... Just stop rolling with Joey, (laughs) brah. Yeah, that that too. But uh, it was one of those things that I said, okay, let's go back a step and go, okay, well, why are you getting armbarred? Oh, well, they they just keep passing my guard. And I'm like, well, what's your guard like? Oh, my guard's terrible. Well, actually, yes, you can learn how to escape an armbar. You should probably work on your guard retention and then you're going to be getting armbarred less, perhaps. And it was trying to go back to the root cause. And they just did no work on their guard retention at all. They're like, nah, I won't improve my guard. I'll just get really good at getting out of arm bars. Yeah. And I'm like, I think it's a bit too late, you know? And so it's trying to go back to what was the actual mistake. And no one had actually said to this person, hey, try to work on guard retention. Try to work on not getting past, and then you don't have to be the king of arm bar defense, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to say there's a lot of people out there who are not winning and also not learning. <laughs> they're, they're, they're making mistakes in jujitsu, and as a result... Um, they just they just keep making the same mistakes and they're getting a bit stuck, and and ultimately the problem with this is if the mistake means you get armbarred or you get choked a lot, it might turn into an injury. Where's the amnesia come into this? I believe that people are not following up on what they learned, so that's that's where it's that's where the amnesia piece comes in. You're there, you witness the technique, you see it, oh yeah, cool, but then that you don't you don't actually 
close the loop of the learning. There's no yep. follow-up. And look, that, that could be partly to do with your instructor, the way the instructor... Because for many people, when they go to jiu-jitsu class, every class is different. Yeah. I you mean, know? largely, I think that's how it goes for most. Yeah, like you, you won't... Depend it's a collection of random techniques that we're getting introduced to every day. Yeah. yeah. And then you go to class on Monday and maybe they're doing stand up but then the next monday it's a totally different technique yeah so you didn't actually get a chance to practice your single leg or practice your your uchimata or whatever it might be right but that's where the responsibility kind of falls to you my friends that um you need to find a way to practice that individual thing like practice fixing the mistakes you make and then make sure that goes into the loop of you training and learning Man, I'm so pumped because I am hydrated by our good friends at Sodi. Sodi are an Australian brand who are keeping all the best athletes hydrated. Or maybe you're just a thirsty human and you are trying to be a bit less thirsty. This is my favorite flavor. This is salty grapefruit. Seriously underrated. Very fresh. Now, essentially, we are human walking oceans. We need to have sodium, potassium, and magnesium in our blood. And that's what these guys have done. So Jason Kale at Sodi have put together this beautiful product and you, my friends, can get a discount when you order with the discount code BULLETPROOF15 for 15% off and you can stay very hydrated. You know, can I just offer something up on your point prior to that? Please. About um, this week, you know, we're doing stand-up. Next week we're doing something else. It was only pointed out to me uh, by Paul Smeebert. Shout out, my coach at Balmain. Um, who he pointed out that if you teach your students a, a technique this session or this week or this month, don't go and teach them the defense just after that because right. you want the students to have a chance to use the technique. Right. And I think, and I'm like, well, that makes perfect sense. But you think back to like, I remember like days where I'd be like, all right, guys, it's Monday, so we're doing three different Kimura attacks. Right. And then, okay, guys, it's Tuesday, so now we're looking at Kimura defense. Right. And then it's like, well, no one's getting the Kimuras anymore. Right. You know, which just a fun, uh, interesting observation on how we've, hopefully, some of us have evolved so our approach. They don't get a chance to practice success. Well, yeah, because if everyone just shuts it down, then that thing that we worked on Monday is now defunct. But p- potentially. No, yeah, I, I get what you're saying there. I mean, yeah. And every, I think this is where, um, as an individual, you're doing jiu-jitsu, you got to be proactive about this thing. This is and and as much as your instructor is there to guide you and shape your jujitsu, they're responsible for many people. So if you're not learning the lesson, there's probably plenty of other people who are catching on, and maybe you're kind of falling through the cracks a little bit. But you don't want that to be the compounding ongoing effect for the whole year, no, because then you're f-ing stuck, right? Yeah. But uh, this is what I was going to say. That this is just from my own experience, and you know, chime in on this one, Joe. The, the times I've found I learn really well or I'm able to really cement a new idea is directly post-class. It's usually the post-roll period when, you know, we definitely encourage you to be doing your stretches and, you know, have a chat with your friends. But, you know, I've, I've noticed this a couple of times, whether it be with like Adam or uh, wherever I'd be training, uh, especially Absolute St. Kilda. I actually do this as part of the pro class, but I understand if you can't do this as part of your normal class, you know, got to clean the mats, got to get everybody out the gym, blah, blah. If you had a problem with something, grab the person and maybe grab your coach or whoever and go, they kept doing this thing to me and I don't understand what the hell's going on here. I don't know why that worked for them or didn't work for me. Or, you know, actually what getting... Mistake, my mate. <laughs> you know, what, what, getting the direct feedback with the person, Yeah, I, I believe is a way of closing the loop of like being like, right, I had this problem and now I'm... I'm solving it. And then you take that information in. So next time I come back, I'm not going to do that. Or next time I come back, I do it different. Yep. So that, that time for me, it's that immediate post-class. It's still fresh in your mind. That way when I leave the gym, also it's not haunting me in my dreams. Yes. Like why? You know, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever experienced that, Joe, where someone hits you with a, a, an absolutely devastating pass or submission and kind of haunt, you go home and you just, Why? How? I should never come home with me. <laughs> Joe, on the mats. Joe, Joe is like, I, I, I've never experienced this. I don't, I don't know what that unicorns, is. Unicorns, hamsters running around, a little <laughs> cheese wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, thinking always. About, thinking about memes. Uh, but I mean, the, um, 
the the ridiculous thing about that in in my context is that I'll have that experience, but I never ask the coach, "Hey, this." I never, I never, and I and too proud. No, just can't be. F- <laughs> Class is over now. I got to go. I'm done. <laughs> See you all next I'll week. I'll be completely honest. I do. I do these days. I'm. I am somewhat more proactive about this, but yeah, I just, I just like. Yeah, probably should ask about that thing that wasn't working out today, <laughs> but <Yep>. it. <laughs> I'm a f-ing black belt. <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> Shit. Um, that's cool. But that's, that's cool. but that is and I and I and I know that about myself. And so these days I like I'm like, no, ask. You know? Yeah. And it I agree with you. I think it's it is like it's like three minutes of your life it's gonna take. Yeah. But the compounding effect of that habit, mm-hmm. hey man. Why isn't this working? Yep. Is huge. Yeah. Because it literally means you fixed a problem mm. that session versus you didn't. Yes. So if every session or like you're correcting mistakes. You know, yeah, like seven out of ten sessions, you're fixing a problem, like you you you're really progressing there. Like you're learning quickly. Yeah, you're you're and here's the thing. <laughs> when I had this discussion with the student when they started doing more the guard retention thing, they started retaining their guard more and they're like, Yeah, but now people are starting to like try and ankle lock me because I can't pass my guard. I'm like, okay, new problem. Like now learn how to deal with that. Like it's good to have new problems, not the same glaring. Yeah, we never like jump the fence and now we're safe. No. (laughs) Like you jump into a new (laughs) hell pit. A new fire. Yeah, (laughs) pretty much. I'm excited. Why's that? We have an apparel sponsor, Parry Athletic. Bro, George came through, messaged us on the Instagram, said he's been following our program for ages. He's getting stronger and more mobile. And he's got this cool gear company called Parry and he wants to send us some stuff. And he told me that his mission was to create the best pair of training shorts ever. Yeah, he wanted something that he could lift and roll in and that could accommodate thick muscular thighs and hips. And that suits us. Speaks to us. Also, what I like is I love the colorful design. It's It actually looks really cool. I am the most colorful dude on the mats these days, hands down. I think the thing that I've loved about it is just it feels good. It feels good. It looks good. And... You, ladies and gentlemen, can get a discount when you go to check out. If you go to parryathletics.com, put in the code BULLETPROOF20 and you get 20% off. Oh, yeah. But uh, it's also the thing with memory, which is, you know, I read a few books on, but it was talking about primacy and recency. You remember which books they were? I do. There's one which is called the, I think it's called the, one is called The Yellow Elephant, which is by a memory champion who's actually from Australia. And um, another Ooh, one. I did a course with a memory champion in Australia here in Sydney. Okay, might be the same guy. I know, yeah, yeah. But this guy, this guy remembered pi to how many decimal to, places? I think it was. Uh, I think he said it was like one thousand six hundred something. Wow. Yeah, that is <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> no, and they sit, they sit there, and they go, go, and he's yeah. like. Well, three, seven, number, six, number. eight, nine, ten. Yeah, five, until he's uh, wild. Yeah, just Sorry, along. Off. But I was going to say that what was interesting about that book, and this is common to another one I'd read, which is called, I think it's called The Memory Palace or The Memory Hotel. The Memory Palace is the technique many have used, which is basically you put the memory in a room. Right. And the palace is essentially a framework for your mind. But when you go into your memory palace, you create this very, you build it. It's this imaginary it's place thing. and you go to a room in the memory palace and that's where you put all your close guard techniques and you go and place them in that area and it's wow. it looks like something. In the same way when you go to your takedown room, which has padded floors, padded walls, you go and you play, you know, and there's Khabib just in the middle with his furry hat. You know, you make it vivid yeah. so that when your recall improves dramatically because you associate the double leg with that thing, you associate... Wow. Yeah, and you build out this memory palace, which is it's intriguing, right? You've got to have a lot of time and mental bandwidth to do this. So, But what I want to say is this. The, the idea of primacy and recency is we don't remember the middle. We remember the beginning and the end. This is true of relationships. This is true of business transactions. This is true of so many things. The middle is a blur, right? Think about high school. It's, you know, like there might be some memories that stand out in the middle, but you generally remember... How did it start and how did it finish? So true. And many relationships are like that. How did Sucking you... Sucking cones. <laughs> how did you meet your ex and how did, how did the breakup go? You know? yeah. And in the middle, there's a lot of ups and downs, even though there might be a lot of good in there. And especially when you've got all the emotion and all the f- adrenaline of jujitsu, right? So you go in the class, 
if you have an intention or you've remembered what you wanted to work on today, that's important. And then how you finish the class is pretty important. And if you, the only thing you remember coming out of it was like, you know, they've discovered alien spy crafts in the South Pole. You're like, whoa, you know, like, you're not going to remember the Delaheva technique, you yeah. know? So if the last thing you associate with jujitsu is solving your problem, you are much more likely to retain that information. That's a great tip. To something, something to consider. Yeah. So just so this year you're not floating through every class, forgetting every technique that's put in front of you, um, the idea of having a chance to get a bit of feedback, whether it's from a training partner or your coach or whoever, and then you can that is going to help you. But you could go a step further. You were actually saying this yourself, Joe. Um, you were using the journal function in the app. Bro, I am. I mean, I've this used it a handful of times. No, but this is this is this is new for you. This right? is this new is for me. Yeah, I'm. I've tried to be the pen and paper guy mm -hmm. many times, and I just can't stick with it. it. I am pen and paper for my daily life. I'm just sitting here with the diary. I'm yeah, no, I, this, but I no. did. But for jujitsu, I'm just not interested in yeah. writing down the techniques and shit. Um, so, yesterday we we've recently gone through a new upgrade with the app. We have. By the time you're hearing this, it will have been live for a week or two. And the journal function has been majorly upgraded. And I was like, oh, I was actually just testing it because it, it's just been released. And I was like, oh, boom, input. And then I was like, oh, what's a note on today's class? And I was like, and I just started typing in like, um, this is what I was working on. This is the mistake I made. Next time do this. Mm. And I was like, boom, save. And I'm like, man, that was so good. Mm. Like that was actually me. Like, because I knew the mistake I made after class. I didn't need to go and drill it. I'm like, I knew what I was doing wrong today. Yep. But Putting it into uh, putting it down right into my phone, sort of six hours later, mm. just really consolidated it for me. So now I'm like eager to get back to class, so I can like go and s try and address that Implement thing. And the thing, you know, and the the way we had the function on the app prior to this, you could still do that. It just wasn't as no, you couldn't do that. You no. couldn't leave notes about the session. You no. could just log that you did a session. You could log the session, and you could put a bit of detail there. Could you? Yeah, yeah okay. like you could write it longer, but it wasn't quite uh, as right. easy. Yeah, it just wasn't as smooth. Whereas now it's smooth and you can just go back and go, oh, what did I do on Monday? Add oh, what did I do on Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. so um, I, let's see if, I, if it stands the test of time for Joey's inconsistent ways of logging his training. Yeah, but it's just something to consider. You might be someone who needs to do that and that, that will help with the learning. And that's, that's what we want. We want everybody to get better on the jiu-jitsu journey. That's right. Awesome times. All right, fam. See you on the mats.